Today we're going to do a tutorial on this fine yard machines by MTD 4.5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton powered 21 inch piece of shit plain Jane not self propelled has the bell and whistle of a bagger so basically all the tools that are required is your blowgun clean it off a little bit if you don't have a compressor you don't have to do that but a grinder for sure if you want to sharpen the blade if you don't have the wherewithal to sharpen it you know uh, you can always just replace it the things only 10 bucks but it makes a big difference if the thing is sharp or not what, what kind of job it does and then we're going to use SAE 30 engine oil in this as in, in previous videos I've made it very clear that you can't use non detergent engine oil or non detergent SAE 30 in an engine it'll foam up and fuck it up for sure so uh, spark plug Eh, you could do that. I mean, it's kind of part of the tune-up. It's cheap, fixed, you know, put it in. J19LM for these Briggs. Um, CJ8 will work, but it's a little bit of a smaller plug. Just put the J19LM in there. So you'll need a 13-16 socket, a drain pan, and, uh, I don't know, maybe some Led Zeppelin. Okay, first thing you want to do is check the oil. Even though you're going to change it, you want to make sure there's some in it because you're going to start the engine and warm that shit up. So, it's full. The next thing... is to change the spark plug. So I'll pop that off. You can inspect it if you want, or you just toss it over your shoulder. Now before you put the new one in, charge the cylinder with a little bit of carburetor cleaner put the spark plug in and set your torque wrench to 15 inch pounds click click put this back on now you charge the cylinder because it's already going to start on the first pull you're going to look like the hero so you want to make sure there's no gas or there is gas in it fresh if you got some shellacky smelling stuff from last year in there eh, there's not really any in there I'll call that empty Could probably fill it up but let's see what happens we'll give this thing a little push uno dos tres cuatro cinco and then give it a pull this is a bozo no no but i hold the safety cable with this so the thing will run for about five minutes to warm up the engine oil now this part takes a little practice and some aim. That looks about right. Now when you're tipping these over, or not, I'm trying to do this one-handed. When you're tipping these over, you have to make sure that the carburetor is upward. And it'll rest right there with most machines, just like that. Boy, there's hardly anything in there, it looks like. But, uh, see the carburetor's upward now, and uh, it won't fill with oil. If you fl flip this thing over the other way, a lot of times engine oil will get into the intake manifold through the crank case breather tube, and then they pull and pull and pull and pull, and they got to call the mower guy over. And, uh, you know, that's a carb job, just because they flipped it over, trying to clean out the deck. So... While the engine oil is draining, typically what I do is I'll pull the blade and sharpen it, put it back on, 
and uh, when it's time to flip the thing back over all you got to do is put the oil in and you're ready to go now when I was showing what tools you'd need I kind of forgot about the blade bolt this is usually going to be between 9 16 and I don't know three quarters maybe but typically they're 9 16 or 5 8 if you have a 3 8 gun that's the perfect tool for this if you don't what you do is you put your foot right about there you rotate the blade over and then you use your ratchet on that leaving your foot to stop that now I know people will say well oh, you gotta have the spark plug disconnected for shut up you ain't gonna get this thing started it's got an engine brake around the flywheel for one for two you're gonna have your foot right here and for three if you're really worried about getting your foot cut off with the lawnmower blade while you're trying to take it off probably shouldn't be doing this in the first place man up there you go so this little spring here washer's got two tits on it it's really important that that index is in the blade when you put it back on because it's as springy this way so this kind of crushes and keeps that thing tight um, if you don't and you have this off slightly or if you put that on upside down this thing's gonna this thing's gonna take off on you it'll screw this all up screw this adapter all up and you'll have to replace it which looks like this blade could actually use a little replacing anyway it's been sharpened a few thousand times and uh, yeah, it's pretty worn right here these high lift areas of these blades when you start to see wear right there from the grass this gets so thin and so worn it'll fuck right off and now the thing's out of whack you won't really tell from a vibration on this thing unless you bend it uh, these don't really vibrate much when they lose a little section uh, but if you bend it you'll know and if you bend the crank you'll obviously know too the thing will shake rattle every bolt and nut will come out of this thing and and uh, that'll be why this is the crankshaft of the engine and even though it's keyed to the flywheel with an aluminum key to try and snap that keyway and separate the shaft from the flywheel on a sudden stop let's say the buffalo box or a big rock or a culvert or something like that it really depends on where the object strikes the blade if this thing's going to bend or not it's this kind of is the area where vacuums created it lifts the grass blades up straight so the blade will cut them so if this is extra clogged which this one is not uh, you want to knock all that shit out of there let's grind this up dress it a little bit it's not too bad all right so the way I like to do this is I put it in the vise everybody's got a couple of these some are worse than others oh I think I might have just bent it and get it about like so and uh, this edge eh, not that important there's your cutting edge so the way I do this and have for years and I don't care if there's anybody out there that's going to say, oh, you got to balance it. No, you don't have to balance it. No, you do. They say, you, no, you fucking don't. So don't worry about it. So I used to uh, have a blade grinder, and I find that I ended up with all the mulching blades and the way that they're all wavy gravy nowadays. You got to do it this way anyway. So just use the blade, the blade grinder on the right-hand side. That'll shoot the sparks downward, and you get a nice 45-degree angle on there. All right, so uh, yeah, it's a hand job, but come on. Is that not just as good as a rotary blade grinder? Of course it is. Do the same on the other side. This takes a little practice and finesse, but oops, it's not too hard. I taught many a Utes to do this over the years. Come on, cord. Okay, back at it. Again, make sure that you're putting the blade on right. I've had many mechanics over the years, and I use that term loosely, that have put the blades on upside down. And it should be pretty obvious that that's not the way it goes, but I've seen it happen a million times, and it stripes the grass like a motherfucker. Because this here is really, really low, and this here is noticeably higher. So, put the thing on right. The wings 
always go upward okay so put that on it should stay put and then again make sure that your tits are engaging that hole not your tits these tits take your five or uh, that's uh, 3h24 3h fine thread see how easy it would be to make sure that that's not engaged so another reason I like using the air tools you can zip it up tight and she's all right, <laughs> all right. you know you pretty much got it right on the money gonna double check it with the stick but for the most part try not to overfill it because then you got to tip the thing back over and basically you're gonna tip it back over into the drain oil so you uh, you know you're throwing shit away and stick a fork in this one now normally I would have pressure washed it first but the pressure wash is out on a job right now so uh, yeah you douche it off real good when you wash these things try and I can put my oily fingerprints all over it because I'm gonna have to do that anyway I have to wash it uh, when you do wash these things with a pressure washer try not to get it out underneath too much underneath the air shroud and try not to soak the air filter now I did intentionally neglect to replace or clean the air filter because of the fact that this is a sponge setup so getting into this one if you want to take that screw off and take the thing out and soak it in solvent and get all that oily solventy shit all over your hands and then dry it out by squeezing it and then putting oil back on it and squeezing it all over your hands and sticking it back in there thinking that you're doing something good for this thing go ahead because that's what the procedure was back in the 80s uh, nowadays you can buy these things new if you want but they are supposed to have a little bit of oil squeezed into them so it's kind of a messy job uh, these things they trap dirt for 20 30 years before they'll ever fail once they start coming apart I mean if you felt like inspecting it you could but we got a little goo down here yeah I'm gonna be all right with that because why because it started on the first pull so an old uh, old engine like this running a little rich does not bother me one bit um, change the spark plug once a year change the oil check it put the gas in it and uh, you know it was $89 what are you going to do? Alright, any questions, leave it in the comments. Thanks.